Yay, we're talking about Scala's object-oriented features. So cool. Mm -hmm. um, Scala is a object-oriented language in addition to being a functional programming language. And you can see that I've already you know, shown you a little bit of this, but let's, let's actually look at these um, OO uh, features in a little bit more careful way. All right. So anyway, top level, here is uh, you know, the kind of thing we've been doing in um, Scala. We've been doing lots and lots of functional programming. Uh, this particular little business, what is it doing? It takes a list of numbers zero to nine, um, and then it partitions them based on this predicate. So this is kind of like filter, except what partition does is it gives you a pair of lists rather than a single list. So if you come over here and run this, um, you can see that what, what we've done is taken the numbers zero through nine and partitioned them into two separate lists. So we get the result here is a pair of lists. Um, the first one has the elements that uh, met the predicate. So these are the things divisible by three. And the second one has the things that did not meet the predicate. So these are the ones um, that are not divisible by three. All right. So we've been doing that kind of stuff. Um, but we can also, uh, you know, Scala has a full on uh, class based language sitting inside of it. And so uh, we can also um, play around with Scala as a class based language. So here I've got a counter um, and every time I call the get method, it is going to uh, <coughs> write the field in into a temporary. It's going to then increment in and then return the temporary value. So uh, we start off at zero. So the first result we'll get is zero. Then you get one, two, three, etc. Okay. So this is a uh, uh, looks like a class, and in fact, it is a class. Um, you can see this looks, you know, kind of similar to um, languages you would know like Java, but it's you know the syntax is a, a little bit different. Okay. All right. Um, all right, so what we're going to do then is talk about object-oriented programming in, in Scala, how to define classes, fields, methods, and the role of this special uh, thing, which is um, um, a companion object. So, uh, and the role of objects in Scala. There's two different kinds of objects in Scala. Those, there are those that are created as instances of a class, but Scala also has objects which are declared one-off as top level sort of objects. Okay, well, let's go, let's start with classes because they're more uh, familiar. So um, what we can do is define a class. And when we define a class, um, we can define the class to have uh, parameters. So here is a class uh, with three parameters, F1, F2, and F3. Um, and I'll just describe the distinctions between these um, just a little bit. So um, the, the difference here is that uh, F1 is a parameter to the class, which you're not actually going to be able to access from outside the class itself. So this is a class parameter that is sort of hidden inside the class. You can think of it almost kind of like a private uh, value. Okay, so it's, it's something that only the class can see. Um, Whereas F2 is something that's going to be visible to the outside world. So you can think of this like a param uh, sorry, a field that I'm initializing. So uh, F2 here is going to correspond um, to something like a field. Uh, likewise, F3, and the difference between them uh, is, of course, you can tell from the val var, uh, vals are going to be uh, immutable fields and vars will be mutable ones. Okay, so... Uh, that's what all this notation uh, means. Um, when I create an instance of the class, I can do it uh, just like so. And um, what's, you know, this is just one of those things that's kind of a, you can think of it as a cleaned up version of, um, of what you have in Java. Java has a huge amount of, you know, boilerplate just to create a class and initialize the variables. So there's a class. Um, and now I can create an instance of the class and just give it some values, you know, three, four, five, or whatever. And that will um, instantiate the class for me. 
Okay. Um, note that when you instantiate a class, what you get back is this is uh, invoking the two string method to display that instance. And because I don't have a meaningful two string, it's using the default one, which is the same as Java's. So it prints the class name, uh, an ampersand, and then a hash code. <coughs> if we want to access the fields, uh, we can do that for the, the available um, uh, fields, the ones that were declared as valor var. So, and uh, we can mutate the mutable ones. So F3 is publicly mutable. Um, this, this looks like F1, uh, sorry, F2 and F3 are fields. The way it's implemented, these are actually implemented using what we, uh, are known as sort of getters and setters. Um, so when we assign into a field like this, it's actually invoking a method to set the variable. So we can see that by uh, disassembling the code to see what's going on. So let's start with the simplest case where we have uh, just a class with a single class parameter. And let's use the simplest kind, which is just um, you know, a single, it's not a valor of R, it's just a class parameter. And I defined a method here which uses that class parameter. So um, again, uh, I showed you this in an earlier lecture. We can disassemble classes from within the interpreter to see what this class does. And um, at least on my system, in order to do this, I had to have Java 8 running as my basic implementation. It did not work for me, at least with Java 10. I'm not sure I tried Java 9. But anyway, um, it did not work with Java 10. And uh, in any case, uh, if, if you can, you should try running this. It's um, from the Scala interpreter. And this works also within SBT, uh, in, the, in, this, in the console of SBT. You can uh, run this command, which will print out um, you know, what, what that object looks like. Let's actually do it live, because it's more amusing. Um, so there is the class C1. And um, let's then uh, disassemble it. And I'm going to run this command here. And let, let me actually run it without C to begin with. Um, C at makes it show you the code. So if you run it without C, you'll just see um, the elements here. Minus P means show me the privates. So if you leave that off, um, it won't show you the, oh, it won't show you the privates. Oh, it showed me all sorts of crap. Um, <laughs> oh, goodness. OK. Um, so apparently, minus P does more than what I thought. Um, and uh, minus filter means hide things that I don't want to see. <laughs> so uh, the real names that are under the hood are actually these horrible things. Um, and so if you want to you know, hide all that horrible stuff that Scala adds and have it look nice, that's what filter does for you. Okay. Um, anyway, you can sort of see right here that we have this thing. And uh, in fact, it's, it's enough right here to, to see what this class is structured. So we have a private uh, integer field and then a method called double, um, and then a constructor which takes an int. So none of that is sort of surprising. Um, you can actually look in here in the double method and see um, how it works. This is sort of what Java Virtual Machine language looks like. Um, we have get field, and then it uses these offsets, so or these constants, these symbols. Um, and it tells you in the comment what it's doing. So this is actually the field x. So um, we're getting that field and doing stuff. Okay, So this is put field uh, to store the value. All right. Um, <coughs> so that's what it looks like if you have just the um, immutable parameter or the non-accessible parameter. What happens if we actually make the parameter accessible to the outside world by making it a val? Well, in that case, um, we get an additional thing, which is this method uh, called uh, x. So this method gives me access to the private field. Um, note the field is final, so it can't be modified. And in fact, there's no method here that allows you to even try to do that. So uh, x here is uh, final, and um, this method gives you access to that um, field. So it's one thing that's funny in, in Scala's syntax um, that syntactically, Scala doesn't really distinguish um, fields and methods. So when I actually access one of these things, so let's create an object, uh, sorry, a, a new C2. Um, 
I need to provide the parameter. Um, so now I've got a new C2. Um, let's actually access this um, field. So you can see here um, that the uh, parentheses aren't necessary there. And in fact, it doesn't even like it if you put them on. Um, but in the, in the Java Virtual Machine, it, it is actually implemented as a method. So this is the way uh, it's implemented under the hood. Um, finally, if we make something a uh, variable, this is now a variable field um, that we can mess around with. So in that case, we have not only the um, getter method, which gets the value of x, but we also have a setter. Um, and it's written out as uh, x equal. So this is x uh, is assigned something. So when they write this in the, in the Scala literature, they write it as x equal. So we have uh, x and x equal, which gives us the value or allows us to assign the value of x. Um, and you can you know, see pretty much this has got a get field for getting the value of x, and this has got a put field for putting the value of x. And the field itself is hidden. All right, um, so that's the, the basic idea of class parameters. Um, then within the, the, after we declare the parameters of the class, we have an opportunity to uh, give a class body. And the class body, it's just a general bunch of Scala code. It can include uh, declarations for vowels or vars. It can include uh, constructors. Um, it can include also methods. All right, so there's a lot of stuff um, in here. The, the funny thing is that the way constructor code works um, you don't actually declare a separate constructor. So instead, the way you should think about this in Scala is um, when you want to instantiate the class, it runs all of the declarations or all of the code in here sort of in order. Um, the one thing that it doesn't execute are the defs, so that the defs are code, which uh, obviously don't get executed as we, we do them. Um, so. <coughs> When we uh, take this definition and sort of uh, run it in Scala, gar, uh, what happened there? Huh? Let's let's start over. Actually, let me paste this. In. I mean, it's getting long enough. I should just put it in a file. Um, so, oh, I forgot the letter C. <laughs> that explains it. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's uh, start here and paste. Um, the file then. Okay, so now I've got the class C that I just defined, and um, I can put it up there. Um, okay, so there's the class C, um, and what I can do is uh, instantiate C, and when I create a C, I need to give it three things, which are the three parameters. They're all ints. So um, we've constructed the instance, and note that the code here is executing. Um, while we create the instance. So essentially, you can think of all of the executable code that's inside of a class. It's all stuff that you're doing in the constructor. Okay, so it just executes them line by line as you go from top to bottom. Um, so we've initialized, uh, in addition, we have some additional uh, fields that are not parameters to the class. And so those are also accessible. So on res 16 here, I should be able to call uh, F1, and that's not accessible because it was a uh, class parameter that was not uh, made either val or var. So um, F2, however, I can get as well as F3, F4, and F5. Okay. Um, the method M takes a parameter, and so I use the standard sort of application syntax for that, and. Um, I need to provide an argument here, um, and that'll do some stuff. So it's going to mutate the mutable uh, fields and then produce a new result. So um, as you can see, it's changing as I um, do that. OK, so that is the class body. Um, in Scala, we can just leave off anything that's not interesting to us. Um, so the smallest class declaration is just um, you can just say class D, and that's, that's, that's it. So this is a class that has no fields or methods, no parameters, nothing, um, no body. Um, 
and you can just leave off everything. So um, any any parts that you don't care about. So if you don't care about the parameters, you can leave those off. If you don't care about the body, you can leave that off. Um, so here's a, a simple class <coughs> that has a um, a um, private variable field in. So um, this is how you create a private variable field um, as opposed to a class parameter, which is um, not going to be variable. So you can't assign it anywhere. You can't use it in the code to update. So um, this is a variable private field. And uh, when we call get here, we'll, we'll just increment it every time. Okay. So that's another version where um, the this variable is initialized inside the class instead of being initialized as a parameter. Okay, the um, the other concept that's important here is that um, Scala also has a notion of a companion object. Um, a companion object is is uh, kind of like a static, all of the static stuff that you'd find in Java. So in Java, uh, you have these um, members of two different kinds. You have um, instance members like F1 and M1, but you also have static members, um, in this case like F2 and M2. And the word static here really uh, does quite a lot. It completely changes the meaning of these things. So um, in fact, if we were to invoke uh, the method F1 in Java, um, how would we invoke that? Well, um, you'd have to create an instance of the class um, in order to uh, access this field uh, f1, you'd have to create an instance of the class. Um, and then you would, um, let's see if we write this in Java. Yeah. And then we can access um, the field, you know, f1. Um, the, it's a very different situation for f2 here. Um, f2 is uh, static. And that means that it's stored not inside of an object, Rather, it's stored with the class itself. So in fact, um, F2 can be accessed without creating an object at all. And the way we access is it is just by accessing the class directly. So um, this is something that's accessible without even instantiating the class. We don't need an instance. Um, whereas if we try to do this with uh, F1, this is going to fail. So the, the this is not possible because F1 uh, is allocated inside of an object. And if we don't have an object around, we can't use it. Okay, so um, there's this sort of weird split universe uh, inside of Java classes between the static and non-static members. Um, this is sort of cleaned up in Scala. So Scala, instead of having static members inside of a class, it has a separate concept, which is an object. All right, so um, I can define an object directly and um, you can think of an object, uh, let's call it O. Um, an object is just a, um, it's an instance of a class, but there's only one instance of that class. So in, um, in Java world, this is called a singleton. Okay, so um, it's a class with a, a single member. Um, of course, when we declare an object, uh, we can declare it to do more interesting things. Um, so for example, we can put variables in there um, and other stuff. Um, and uh, what I can do then is, is a a a access that uh, object and potentially change the object and things like that. Okay. Uh, in fact, you guys have been doing this all along because uh, in your homeworks, if you um, look at your homework assignments, they have all been uh, defining top level sort of Scala uh, objects. So the, um, sorry, I was like, software update, here we go. So um, like this is the solution for FP1 that we looked at last class. Um, you, you might have noticed this, we have uh, this object FP1 and everything is nested within that. <coughs> So this is declaring um, a uh, class that has a 
single instance called FP1. You can't instantiate it uh, using new, so there's only one instance of this class, and it is this one. And um, inside of that, you put stuff. So um, if you're actually compiling Scala at the, at the command line, then every declaration must be inside of either a class or an object. You're not allowed, uh, except in the readval print loop, to have top level uh, declarations that are outside of, um, outside of a class or object. So let's just uh, go ahead and do that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so that is the idea of an object. Uh, so, so mostly objects, you know, you can declare an object and it's fine. Um, there, there's a certain cases where you need static access to the members of a class. And so in Java, they just said, okay, fine, just put the static members in the class. So in Scala, what they decided to do was something slightly different, but it has a similar effect. So um, there is a special object uh, that you can associate with a class. It's called the companion object. And um, the way that you denote that uh, some object is the companion object of a class is you give it the same name. So here, uh, the class is called C, the object is called C, and therefore we consider this object to be the companion of that class. Um, and there's some special uh, privileges that go for being a companion object. Um, so <clears throat> again, uh, these objects, there's only one instance of any object declaration, and this is uh, is support for what's called the singleton design pattern. Um, it's a little bit more general than the, the things that are um, static. So if you take SE350, you'll hear more about this particular idea. All right. Um, so when we, you know, in particular, when we start up a program uh, in Java, we always use a static method main. Um, in Scala, we use a main method of an object. Right? So an object corresponds to something static in uh, Java. So what we use is a main method of an object. Okay, so what's what's the deal with these companion objects? Okay, the ones that happen to have the same name. Um, well, they they get special access, and in particular, um, the companion object gets access to private members of um, the class. Okay, um, all right. So this is um, a way of declaring a class with a private constructor um, and private class parameters. So these are things that come from the outside world, but the outside world is not allowed to see them afterwards, okay, um, directly. So these are private uh, parameters or cla private class parameters, um, X and Y. They are variables. So these are, you know, we can see we're declaring fields. So um, these class parameters are private variables um, and uh, we have one method of this class called translate, which uh, takes an x displacement and a y displacement and translates. Um, so, um, in some cases, you know, it's it's great to give the outside world the power to, uh, you know, give you the values for your fields. But sometimes um, you need to ensure that those fields obey certain constraints. Um, so. That's the purpose of an apply method in the companion object. The apply method um, can take the values that we want to take from the outside world and somehow check them and make sure things are okay. So in this case, I want to make sure that the points are in the range between 0 and uh, 10 inclusive. So I have a check here to ensure that x is between 0 and 10 and that y is between 0 and 10. And only if those two things are satisfied, I will actually create the new point. Right? So, <clears throat> the, so what this means is that the, um, the outside world can't actually uh, construct these objects. Um, the only way to construct a point object is by using the companion apply method. 
Um, so anybody can call this, but this thing checks the parameters to make sure they're okay before it actually creates the object. Um, if, you, if you don't give it the right stuff, then it, it throws a runtime exception. Right? So the easiest way to run this kind of stuff is to uh, use uh, a file and to put it in there. Um, if you want to paste this directly into the console, you have to use paste without an argument, um, in which case it will go into what's called paste mode. You can type in a bunch of stuff and then hit control D um, and it will read in what you just typed in. Um, I find it you know, just as easy to sort of do this in a file. So um, there it is, and then I can just uh, paste um, the file. All right. um, so once we've got that in, we've got our two things defined. Um, and what I can do is you know, try creating uh, one of these objects. And uh, let's try creating an object. And you can see here, um, you know, my parameters are wrong. Um, I can also try something like this. Um, you know, it's, it's got invalid parameter. Um, whereas if I actually get them in the right range, then it'll give me a point back. So like, yay, I get a point. So now I have a point, everybody's happy. Um, and um, life is great. You know, this is a really crappy point. So let's, let's actually very, just real quick here add a two string method. <clears throat> so two string takes nothing and gives you back a string. And um, what are we going to do here? Let's just um, return, and we can um, do a. What do we want? Uh, we'll do a percent d percent d uh, dot format, and we'll pass in x and y. All right. So there's my. Um, um, I don't need the return. Yeah, right. So we're in Scala. Okay, so uh, let's just paste that in. Uh, grr. Uh, I need to override modifier. Thank you. So Scala actually requires me to say that I'm overriding the method. Yay, good on you. Uh, gaw. Def override. <laughs> Sorry. Let's get this correct. Um, all right, let's try one more thing. <laughs> Sorry. Um, thank you. Okay. Sorry, I, I just got to used to my Scala syntax. I'm used to the Java syntax, which is to put an ampersand there. So anyway, Scala doesn't like the ampersand. All right. So there's my definition for the point class. Uh, and now I can create a point uh, and it'll print it out in a nicer way. Yay! Okay, so just if, you're, if you don't like to see these things uh, printed out in this horrible fashion, um, you can get your points printed more clearly and more beautifully. Um, so uh, the nice thing about this is that uh, we can call the point uh, constructor here, or excuse me, the point um, apply method without using the dot at all. Um, one thing that's interesting is that at this point we're not allowed to use new in front of it because the constructor is private, okay? So there is a difference between invoking um, this apply method of the companion object and invoking the constructor because the constructor is, you know, in this case, uh, private. So that's what it means by putting the word private here after the class name. It means please hide the constructor. All right. So yeah, there's a lot of syntax there, but uh, hopefully the idea is uh, pretty clear, and um, you can uh, do you know programming that way with with uh, objects in Scala. All right, so <clears throat> the, you know the, as I said uh, in earlier uh, today, um, these uh, dot apply methods are uh, what you get whenever you just leave the dot apply off. So when you do a function application, it invokes the dot apply method. So um, that's quite a handy sort of um, thing about the language. And it's one of the things that joins the object-oriented and the functional parts together. So um, we've already been using this stuff in the form of like these lists. So when, when we're actually using this list uh, form like this, what we're actually invoking is the apply method of the companion object of list. 
So um, you, can, you can actually write it out instead of writing list one, two, three. You know, that obviously creates that list, but we, can, we could explicitly call uh, apply. And this is invoking the apply method of the list companion object. Okay, that's what that does. Um, and um, that is uh, the basics, you know, the basic ideas of uh, object-oriented programming uh, in Scala. Okay, so we're going to come back to this uh, uh, later when we talk about uh, subtyping and the more some of the more sophisticated things you can do uh, in Scala. This is really just uh, sort of a to get you started in terms of the syntax of, of how to use uh, classes and objects. Um, so the thing I want to drill into a little bit, though, is um, the, the use of classes for creating your own um, complicated types, like lists. Right? So um, how would you do that in Scala and um, get it to support all the great things that we have around lists? So um, I'll go ahead and stop this now. And um, I'll, I'll pick this up in a separate video, okay, in a minute, all right? So we'll see you uh, in just a sec.